So, you want to fly a quadcopter. Congratulations. Welcome to the club. Uh, if you're interested in quadcopters, you probably saw something on YouTube. You probably saw some video, maybe even some racing in the woods. There's a possibility maybe you saw Sharpoo up on Tested. So a couple weeks ago, I joined you guys for a morning excursion. You guys were flying quads, racing quadcopters, and so many people wanted to know how they could build one. And uh, uh, It's also possible maybe you saw some automated construction where people were programming their quadcopters to automatically do manual tasks. It's also possible maybe you just saw quadcopters and you just want to learn how to goof off and just have fun. Wow, it's bright. <laughs> so the Black Ops quad was decommissioned by me because... While others, it's possible you may want to be more interested in the aerial photography side of things. You want to do, get into larger multi-copters and camera mounts with gimbals. Stabilizing itself real nice. There's a lot of information out there though, so where do you start? Well, <laughs> there's a lot of options. Honestly, with all the extra terms, all the uh, abbreviations, terminology, special lingo, it, it can be a challenge to get started. So where do you start? Well, most people recommend starting small. There are many options. I mean, this there's options in the $40 price range. If you're willing to wait for some shipping from China, there's even things down in the $16 price range U.S. Uh, there's other slightly more fancy ones with, that have guards that protect the propellers from banging in the walls, but the long and the short of it is you want to start on something small. You want to start with something you can crash repeatedly and not have to worry about losing thousands of dollars on a crash. Uh, I mean, there are really, really bad examples of, of people who have done not so smart things and, and ended up landing quadcopter equipment into a restricted airspace. Not a good idea. So. <laughs> there's there's a uh, many many things that can break when you do crash one of the most common is uh, propellers as you can probably guess here the nice thing about the small quadcopters though is they can actually bend and, and resist some damage uh, they're they're designed to take a beating they're designed to get back up and get moving again now uh, with the larger ones you seriously, seriously can do some major damage. I'm not going to show that for those photos here. You can go Google and, and find stuff on the internet about people who have gotten injuries from spinning propellers. Just please be safe. Keep keep these away from children, away from pets, away from really anyone that's susceptible to uh, being hurt by flying blades. Now, you certainly can goof off and have fun indoors. I mean, there are smaller ones that will do just fine. And in this case, this guy is actually flying it from the view you're seeing here. This is what he's seeing through a pair of goggles. And he's just goofing off, running around circles in the living room. Now, if, if you're going to fly things indoors and you have anything larger, you really, really need to make sure you have lots of indoor space. Hey, look at the swarm of planes. Oh, oh. propellers. <laughs> <laughs> Now, you'll notice as I'm talking, I'm not really using the word drone very much. It, sometimes it has a negative connotation, especially in the media. 
this image is, is just wrong on multiple levels because this is a military level drone and this thing is I don't know exact dimensions but I want to call this probably 40 50 feet you know 15 20 meters it's pretty pretty significant in length probably even bigger than that now within quadcopters there are there's many different types so the most popular is probably the 250 size racing quadcopters as you can see here this is a, actually a an organized meetup where people were racing now what I see many people ask when they're on the forums when they're on reddit etc is which what should I get should I get a DJI Phantom should I get an Iris Plus should I get all kinds of others well yeah you can go retail you can buy the the pre-existing packages that make things really easy to get up in the air uh, the problem is that uh, the big ones can crash just as well as the little ones and while it's really really nice to have things like GPS assisted quote unquote training wheels when those systems fail you're you're still gonna have issues so you really you really do want to learn on a smaller cheap one that has minimal in the way of assistance so you know how to fly it in wind so you know how to compensate for going around a curve with no GPS helping you out so once you've learned how to fly the little guys the little toys the next step most people will recommend if you browse around on forums is to actually build your own and it, it really isn't that hard and you do need some soldering skill but that's manageable um, here is a really really basic fundamental wiring diagram of how a quadcopter works and this is going to be true for pretty much any type of quadcopter you might have things integrated together you might have wiring done slightly differently but this is generally how it's going to work um, as you can see we have a battery that is plugged in and is it's spliced apart there's a couple different ways to splice apart the wires but basically red is going to red and black is going to black here so we have hot positive wiring going from the battery effectively over to a speed control and it also has a, a neutral negative going over to the speed control and then the speed control is giving power to a DC motor I'm sorry in this case it's actually an AC motor but that's, that's another story uh, there is a control wire that is telling the speed control how fast or slow to go and that is all controlled by a circuit board that is often referred to as a flight controller. A flight controller does a couple things. It kind of takes inputs and it adjusts how fast or slow the different motors need to spin in order to do the various maneuvers that you're requesting. Now obviously the power wires the control wires and the motor wires are multiplied one for each arm so in the case of a quadcopter you have four motors you have four propellers and everything works off of those so the other component here that's listed is a control receiver and we'll get into that in a little bit but a control receiver is basically the wireless component that receives information on what you want the quadcopter to do that information is passed into the flight controller and then the flight controller adjusts it as needed and then pushes it out to the speed controllers so the flight controllers can do other fancy things most of them will have some type of gyroscopic uh, concepts of, of what tilt angle it's at as well as accelerometers to know uh, how quickly it's traveling in any particular direction and can kind of use those sensors to compensate there's other advanced sensors but we won't go into those so in order to get started with building you generally you will need to solder at least a little bit it's really not hard the first thing we do prior to soldering is tin the tip of the soldering iron then I knock off the excess solder and then lightly tin the tip again I then place the tin tip of the soldering iron firmly against the wire the idea is to use the iron to heat the wire then melt the solder onto the heated wire Never touch the solder to the tip of the iron while you're actually soldering. The solder only touches the joint you're soldering. Now, when you're doing 
uh, builds, if you do get into a custom build, you definitely can go with what's called bullet connectors. These are kind of a, a quick easy on, easy off connector between, say, on the motor and an electronic speed control. Uh, there might be a speed controller around here somewhere. Yes, these are the speed controllers that, that this this setup is using, and they have the connectors here on here as well. You can do it that way, but that is adding extra weight. It's probably adding extra wires, and it's definitely adding electrical uh, failure points. Now, there's a lot of good information out there. There's a lot of good resources if you keep on searching. But there's there's many different tutorials and walkthroughs on how to build quadcopters. It's just all a question of finding the right one for you. All right, the easiest way to check rotation here. You never want to check rotation with the props on. You always want to make sure everything's running. What I like to do is I like to fold this in half right around the prop head and make a little flag like this. Now what we can do is if you have a servo tester here, you plug this ESC right into your servo. And then instead of putting power to it, we're actually going to go ahead and just drop it right into this as well. So uh, Alex, do you want to go ahead and uh, pull your all the way to the just want to make sure you don't reverse these. You want to red into red and black into black. It's pretty crucial. Yeah, I'm just going to hold this down. Ready? All right, so this rotation is conventional. So it's this way. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so one. Once you do get up and running, there's a lot of fun things you can do. There's a lot of people have just have fun racing around their backyard. Now there's there's a lot of good resources out there. This is one probably one of the better ones as far as looking at the 250 size mini racing quads. The 250 size is very popular because of its its size, its agility, and its its weight. In that it's a nice, really nice balance for trying to maneuver around obstacles and and uh, get into competitive races. So this blog has a massive list of this this is the different parts you can buy these are the different prices that's that have been found and, and this guy goes through all types of uh, the extra video equipment you, that it's optional uh, power regulators uh, recording all kinds of good stuff so there's many many good resources out there but this is one definitely to check check out and even if you're building a different size quad and if you're not going for a 250 racing quad some of the components here and some of the reading here is still very well worth your time now, one part you definitely need to research and definitely know what you're getting yourself into is the transmitter. The, the tr when you buy a transmitter, you're also buying into all of the, the receivers and the accessories that go with said transmitter system. So, when in doubt, you need to make sure that the, the transmitter and the receiver probably need to be the same brand in order for them to be compatible. If you just grab any random transmitter and any random control receiver, they're probably not going to work unless you get lucky. So uh, there are name brand, big name transmitters and uh, systems that uh, generally they're they're easy to get repaired, but you pay an extra little bit more money for the brand name. There's also smaller name transmitter systems where you're paying less for the brand name and you're paying more for the features and you can get a whole lot more features for that. bind this will start beeping to say it's in bind mode and almost immediately you'll see the LED start to flash that means the receiver's been bound so let's exit out let's reset the receiver and two things will happen we get the telemetry recovered that we know now we're getting telemetry from the uh, from the receiver and 
you should be able to move your sticks and see you know, some of your control surfaces move. So that. In this example, this gentleman is showing how to get the, the receiver, the, the portion that goes on the actual aircraft, and the handheld transmitter itself to start talking with each other. And the in this case, what he's actually demonstrating on servos, on a quadcopter, these you would not have servos. You would have electronic speed controls instead. Um, the other thing is you also noted the transmitter itself actually talked. There are, there are ones that will do voice prompts and let you know, warn you, your battery is low. So if you ever want to get into that type of technology, you want to start looking into uh, researching telemetry. Now, once you've gotten a basic handle on what a quadcopter is, what it can do, and the various parts involved, if you want, you can start getting into more advanced setups, more motors, even less motors, and different configurations. Most of the time what you'll see is uh, a lot of the systems will be a quadcopter X, which is it's, the front is between the two front motors and it's, it's pointing in this direction, that's, that's considered the front. You can see some configurations where it's in a plus configuration where one motor is clearly up front and then there's a, clearly a left and a right and a back. Th this seems to be less common. Um, in, in almost all of these circumstances, it's just simply add a couple more motors. Uh, there's generally, there's almost never servos required in order for a multi-rotor to function to actually fly. The exception is the tricopter, where in a tricopter setup you have a front left, you have a front right, and then you have a rear, and the rear will actually tilt, will lean to the left and to the right based on a, a physical servo movement. So if you ever see X additional terms in terms of, say, like a Y6, where it's, it's got six motors and it's in a big tricopter triangle formation, or you see a hexacopter, or you see uh, an octocopter. That, that's that's what these things are talking about. Is you just you're generally adding more motors, which is which is helpful for redundancy and for uh, lift capabilities. Now, hopefully, this video has kind of given you an intro into the basics of quadcopters. Kind of answered the, a couple initial questions. If you still have more questions, ask around. There there are a lot of online resources. Uh, Reddit is one of them. You can certainly jump onto RC groups. There's all kinds of other other uh, forums and social groups out there for, for trying to figure things out. Uh, but when in doubt, Google it, because there's a lot of times someone's already documented it. Well, I thank you for your time. I hope this was useful and informative. And uh, please, do stay, stay safe and have fun flying.